Let's get started, shall we? All right, cool. Hi, everybody. Um, okay. you want? I don't know if this is what you want. Um, welcome to Elevating Team Identity through branding. Um, I'm Jen, and if you want to go to the next slide, I'm Jen. <laughs> uh, I am a graphic designer. Uh, I am also a first alumni from Michigan. I um, do all the things for all the things um, all the time in terms of robots. So there, there, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, and I am both an FLL and FRC alum. So I have been there, done that as both a student and now as well. So I um, am very passionate about branding in the first realm because I think it's an underutilized uh, resource slash uh, topic that I think um, can actually teach teams a lot of good in a lot of different ways. So um, I know that in the FRC realm, there is the imagery award. So everybody kind of thinks about that specifically when you're talking about, um, you know, branding and, and what's going on. Um, that's sort of a broad term and it can mean a lot of different things depending on what you Google and, and what uh, different terminology you're looking at. But um, but the main thing is when, when you're talking about brands and their imagery and all of that things, most people think about a logo, right? If you're thinking about what is the brand of this? Oh, there's a, you know, this, if you go to the next slide. Yeah. So like these are brands, right? You think if you're thinking imagery, you're like, all right. The biggest thing about these is that technically none of these tell you anything about the company, right? This is, th what is this? It's a circle, right? With a couple colors in it. We all look at this and we're like, okay, it's Pepsi, right? Um, a swoosh has nothing to do with a shoe, right? Technically, you could go down the M route of pride, but like, I don't know, right? So, um, and point being, like, logos alone do not actually get you um, branding. Um, it is what, what is surrounding a logo and, and, and the work that is put in behind the scenes and the associations that people put with those logos that actually give them um, weight. And um, obviously, as a as a first team, you're not going to get the same recognition as these logos, right? Mm -hmm. But the goal is, is to be able to create that association. And I can tell you that millions of dollars were spent on these logos, right? To make sure that the exact tone of, of red or the exact angle represents this, that, and the other thing, all of that's great. And everybody likes to make it into this big deal. But at the end of the day, a logo is just a logo. It's just a, a, a one small part of everything. Um, so if I go to the next slide. Um, I think something to focus on a little bit more is the visual identity. And what I mean by that is, is everything that a person sees that has to do with your brand. And when I'm saying your brand, I'm talking about, in this case, your team, right? So um, this can be any sort of pictures you use. If you use a specific filter on Instagram of your pictures, that's a certain look that you're creating, right? Font choices, um, colors, specific layouts, specific um, product designs. In our case, that's robots, right? So if you always power coat your robot in a certain color, or you always have bright orange stuff all over your robot, um, or whatever, right? Um, or specific bumper number fonts. Uh, uh, the, those kind of things are all, all part of your visual identity, and that allows people to recognize you. Um, and we'll talk about why uh, you know that's important in a lot of different ways, but essentially. Um, it's important to view your brand as more than just a logo because yes, a logo goes on things. And I know a lot of you are wearing a thing with a logo right now, right? But it is, a, it, you know, if you just focus on that, you're kind of narrowing your, your focus a little, little, um, a little narrow. So you might think, okay, cool. Let's, let's, we're going to brand ourselves. So we're going to, we're going to come up with a, a new team logo or whatever. You may think, all right, we're going to start with the logo. And then obviously after you make the logo, you can then make things that work with the logo. That's your fonts, your colors, your whatever. But I would like to uh, suggest a different way to do it. So if you, if you go to the next slide, I think we work from outside in instead of inside out. Branding is how people view your team, right? So it is the overall picture of when someone says, you know, 686, what are they thinking? Just have to look up through the first two I saw. Cows, that's what I think of. Um, <laughs> um, also, really great pit friends. But um, but in any case, um, you know, 
how you how people think of your team is sort of the overall branding, right? And you can get there. You can get to really strong branding with a strong visual identity, right? So if people can recognize you, that allows them to make the association that you know you want with your with your visual identity. Um, however, um, the, you know the biggest thing about branding is you can make decisions on how you want people to perceive you. Now, obviously, there is a level of you can't fully control how other teams, other you know volunteers, other community members see you. But if you take the time to look into your branding, you can help focus that to convey what you want to convey. And so that is focusing on your team identity, recognition. So that means the, the visual recognition of you see a certain color, you see a certain logo, you see a certain whatever. You might look at the Pepsi logo and be thirsty, right? That kind of thing. Um, uh, and so you want to create that recognition where people see your logo, one, or see your branding, one, identity, know who you are, are able to recognize not just specifically where it says Comet Robotics. You know, be able to look at it and say, that's the Comet Robotics bot or something, right? Um, and then also some sort of feeling. So if you look at just, I'm just gonna like 254, you see a blue robot, you know, and they're all like fancy and whatever. And you're like, that is it. You, you even just see the little cheesy poofs logo and you're like, that is a good team. Their name is the cheesy poofs. That is not, it's still a lot of like professionalism and like, you know, high quality athlete sort of feeling, right? Many team, but they are obviously a very good, you know, many times world championship winning robot. So it doesn't really matter what your specific brand is, just that you work to make it consistent and focus on what you want it to convey and let that happen. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So um, some things to consider um, when you're looking at your brand. And again, this doesn't have to be like, let's rebrand everything. You can take something that you already have and increase your branding. Um, there are two main audiences that you will be interacting with as a uh, and the first team. So you have your outside the first community. And what I mean by that is not like at competition or at first except, you know, events. So um, you're connecting with old sponsors. Hopefully you have sponsors and you want to keep going back to them. They want to keep coming back to you. There's a really great recognition when you see someone out in the world and you're wearing your shirt and they're like, hey, I think my company supports you. And you're like, great, hey, thank you. You know, even just that is a really great um, thing. Also, obviously, gaining new sponsors, um, community engagement, and by that I mean it could be going to the farmers market, it could be volunteering at a running to run a summer camp, or it could be advocating um, at a state, you know, a state level or or whatever some sort of advocacy program. So, um, and then of course also recruiting new members. And so things to think about, and I'm not saying this is um, new league Hall of Fame team for coconuts. They are um, team from Arizona. This is them at competition. They wear like cool tutus and socks and suspenders. And this is them advocating at the Arizona State Capitol, right? Not saying that you have to have these two, but having a brand that can do both um, is very helpful um, because it may be difficult to get people to take you seriously if this is what you're showing up to. Now, if that is your full brand and you want to go with this, by all means. I know Blue Cheese wears their cheese hat at the Virginia State Capitol. There's cheese heads. And like, it works for them. They get they get Congress people to put the cheese heads off, right? So like, again, they have decided that that is a visual thing that they want to have people remember. And that is something that they have focused on. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, within the first community, like, you know, I feel like this is the more obvious stuff, but we all know competition's a blur. Everything's chaos all the time. When you're thinking about things like alliance selection, yes, I know we all scout. I know that everybody's watching all these things. But at the end of the day, if there's two teams that are very close and you have that recognition of, oh my gosh, you know, whatever, insert random thing here, they're the team with the space unicorn. Okay, like, cool. Like, we all love Fred the Space Unicorn from Space Raider. At least I do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So, you know, like that kind of thing can stand out and make even just the slightest difference. Or maybe those scouters are actually watching your robot more closely because they know who you are and they're remembering that about you, right? So then maybe that scouting is just slightly better because they're watching. Um, and then also judge the same thing. 
the judges kind of get pulled through this like gauntlet of meeting all these scenes, hearing all these things, doing, you know, I'm sure I've never been an, uh, an FRC judge, but I've been judges in the other two programs and I know how after a while things just start to blur a little bit, right? I mean, it's just the reality of it. You want to make sure everybody's getting their fair shot, but after you hear the same stuff, oh, hey, our robot scores notes in the speaking. <laughs> okay, how does it do it? Well, look at these wheels, they're spinning. Okay, you know, um, and again, that's not just to anybody, but I can see how it can be very, you know, um, blurry in terms of standing out. And so if you can do something that allows you to stand out even just the smallest bit, oh, hey, that was the team that had the, I don't know, flag on the robot or something or I, whatever, right? Um, that may yeah. just give you that slight edge. Yeah, yeah, Google yes, right? Exactly, got it. Um, so, uh, you know, that's just something to kind of keep in, keep in mind. And then also just the first community at large. Obviously there are teams that we all know and it's not necessarily because of their success. Obviously we are going to know teams that are, you know, habitually winning world championship or that kind of thing. But there are teams that we kind of to know of. Um, even teams that maybe haven't been successful in a long time because their brand sticks out and you just kind of know who they are. Uh, and that can be helpful in a lot of ways. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we, you know, obviously you could rebrand your whole your whole um, team and, and focus on it in a very big way. If you want to do that, let me know because I'm very passionate about branding teams. Um, and uh, I've done quite a few of them. But, um, but if you're just looking to like, right, how can we up our game here? How can we seem more cohesive? And again, this can help build team, you know, team relations within your team too. Um, I will say 9072 wearing orange um, to competitions threw us off <laughs> to no end, no shade. It just, we saw them and I was like, hey, you're not one of our children. <laughs> but like, I was, you know, it, it totally <laughs> love them. They're great. It's just, it's one of those things, right? Of, of I, I have created the association of 614 is orange and all we do is just orange. And so when I see orange, I'm like, ah, oh, hey, you know. Um, so something you can do is um, implement some sort of dress code. Now, that being said, that sounds very dramatic. You can do this. The SAGs win imagery all the time. Understandably so. They wear jumpsuits and, and hats with, with hard hats with antlers on it. And they have little shop towels that are yellow and it's like a fantastic it, you know that's a stack you're not gonna like it doesn't, it doesn't even matter if they're wearing the hat you see what you, you know who they are right um so they all get their jumpsuits and they wear them all competition right um it doesn't have to be that dramatic you can have everybody wear the same shirt our team our 614 has you know um like black shirts with the logo on it we can't we don't wear those to competition right we wear our orange shirts um, because again, it stands out. And it's all you do to one, just purely from a mentor <laughs> chaperone standpoint, great. You can pick them out, you know where they are. Um, but also, you see an orange shirt, you know that, I mean, for our purposes, I'm like, okay, good, unless it's 1972. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, so, so that's sort of kind of how, how, that's a very simple way of just everybody gets the same shirt. Everybody wears that shirt to competition. If you're cold, put something on underneath it, um, just to make sure that that is consistent across the board and from far away, everybody knows who you are. And that can really help create a level of yeah, a level of um, consistency across the board. Which again, at the end of the day, as mentors, we're not we're, we're generally around for more you know for more than four years. We're going to see those the kids are going to graduate. We're still going to be here. And creating that consistency across time can be very helpful in terms of that recognition. Um, I talked briefly about the primary color. That's sort of what 614 just dives fully into. It's just, we are orange. All of our 3D printed things are orange. The kids were sad because we couldn't make wires that were orange. I was like, that's not, we can't do that. They're red and black, it is what it is. Um, like, it's not on brand. I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> Thankfully, Andy Mark makes their compliant wheels that are lime green, which is our, our third color. So that's great. Um, but again, like orange is our, is our color, right? Um, you can also fully lean into your theme and you can add little bits of all of this to kind of help. But Koi Box is a really great example of this. Um, you walk up to this and you fully understand what it is. Um, it's the Koi font. They have this very like cool like art kind of style which shows up very differently than a lot of the more like stark, you know, things. 
And they also have a bunch of the little stuffed Ikea sharks. Why koi fish have sharks, I really don't know, but like it doesn't matter because if we, I literally went to Ikea and I saw one of those, and I was like, the koi <laughs> They're your association. It doesn't even fully make sense. Um, because that, that's like their enemy. I think I don't know. But, but, but you know what I mean? They have created the association in my brain that is completely out of context. Walking through IKEA, I see the blah or whatever it's called, and I'm like, whoop, there it is. Like koi bots are here, right? Um, and it's not like they pushed it in any very dramatic way. They just had their people carry around their sharks and they would like throw them up during <laughs> math. I don't know, right? Um and we, I gotta do a shout out to the lumberjacks because I mean, they've got beards, they've got plaid, and they actually, their driver station is just a long piece of stained wood. Um, and like, you get it. You're like, yep, that's the lumberjacks. I mean, you could ask any person who are the others of the lumberjacks, right? And so kind of taking a step back um, and looking as to what you want your team to represent and then just deciding. I suggest writing, I mean, we have brand standards. Um, and, and it does, again, I, I know that I'm a graphic designer, and so I'm going to go very into the weeds about it. But even just a one page document that says a competition, we will all wear our orange shirts, right? We will all, um, or, or whatever it is, we we'll insert random thing here, or every single robot of ours will have a common household appliance name, because we name all of our robots after common household appliances. It has nothing to do with Hawks, has nothing to do with orange. It's just the thing that we do. And you know, cheese grater was great <laughs> this year. Um, and so and it's just a matter of deciding what you want your team to represent and then writing that down so it can be consistent. So this is an example of our this is our team guidelines. Um, this is what we always have a logo for our robot name. Um, and again, this is like here's our logo, here's how to not mess it up. Um, right? It's true. Um, and then this is, we did a special edition hoodie one year and it only happened one year and we couldn't wear the competition, but we still have them, right? So it's in the brand guidelines, it's the thing that exists. Um, here's our fonts um, and colors with all the different codes you need. Here's any sort of different documentation, um, PowerPoint slides, email signature, Bumper numbers centered in a certain fonts, which again, very visual, very apparent to everybody. I think that's it. Um, and I'll say one more thing before we, um, if you want to put on the 5731, this is actually my alumni team. I granted them years ago. I'll take a second. Okay. Um, but so uh, just for background, 573 is a team that is made up of two schools. Um, there are two private schools, one's an all boys school, one's an all girls school. Um, the, <laughs> Oh no, okay, well, oh, whatever, you don't need to see it to know, but they're also orange and black because apparently I just look really good in orange. Um, and uh, the orange and black branding is coming from the boys' school because the team was originally started as like from just the boys' school, because you know. Um, and when the girls joined, it was like, all right, cool, but now we're just in your branding. And so the guys started wearing the uniform skirts um, that the girls wore every day, just competition. And they're, they're green, yellow, and navy. So they have nothing to do with the orange and black colors. But the, the 573 colors are orange, black, white, and the plaid. You cannot just use the yellow. The color is the plaid. So you, my point being, you can make branding whatever you want it to be. It's just that now when they get onto an alliance or their alliance captain, they pick people and they want to wear the skirts, right? Like it's a very weird, like what is happening right now? But it's, you know, it's just become part of the branding. Um, and again, I think it, it, the biggest thing is the consistency. You can have a meeting with your team, talk about it, figure out what's important, what you want to put forward into the world, you know, what you want that image to be, write it down. It could be, like I said, a one-page document and say, here's what we're going to do at competition, in our shop, on social media, whatever. And then, you know, just follow that. Um, oh, um, this is my little plug. I will happily come and visit your team to talk about branding. I have lots of feelings about it. I have um, branded a few teams around here, a uh, few teams in Michigan, and, and um, happy to have that conversation of either going through a brand refresh, which is just, hey, we kind of know what we want, but we just need a little bit of help getting there, or a full rebrand, or just a conversation in general. 
Um, sometimes you have non-negotiables, right? Sometimes the school's like, you have to be these colors, or you have to be a hawk, or you have to be this. But we can work around that, right? The reason we have green in our logo for the eye is that we we're originally sponsored by the Night Vision Labs on Fort Belvoir. And so the non-negotiable, when I first helped brand the team was, well, we need to have green in there. And I'm like, green and orange together look like a citrus, like, like Florida, a citrus like company or like a health food store. And like, I'm not, we're not any of those things. And so our orange is, it's, it's the it, orange and green do not touch and that is part of our <laughs> whole thing, right? Um, but again, there's non negotiables and we have to, you know, and, and those we can work around. But again, if you want to have any conversations about it, I'm perfectly happy to have them. I love having them. Um, and I think that's it because I know I'm like way over. But one more plug. Um, <laughs> Also branding because I, you know, um, it, it was the 614 logo, but the nice team. Um, and, uh, so, the hex got makes it look so fun. Uh, so, um, we are hosting an off-season September 28th. Um, it will be, we'll just be playing for Shadow. Um, we're to, team well, and volunteer registration is open. You can go to team614.org slash cry. Um, because we often have a good cry together. Um, and that being said, also because you all are um, fantastic, wonderful mentors, we are working on our Cry Now, Not Later Resource Expo, mm -hmm. which is um, the goal is to kind of get as much useful information into team stands as possible before the season starts. Mm -hmm. And so anything that we can do um, to help is good. We're going to have a 3D print showcase. Um, which will just be kind of useful 3D prints submitted from teams everywhere with then a QR code to link to all the five design files so you can print them at home. Um, we're going to probably do a battery pre order because I know bad shipping batteries is awful and we'll get a good price on them. Um, and ask the key volunteer because you can never talk to key volunteers at events because they're too busy. Um, so those are the three we have started. Um, but if you have a specific skill or a specific thing that you're passionate about and you would like to have a booth, we would love to have you just feel free to email us and we can talk but thank you so much <laughs> Well, you ever had a process where you had a team that really needed to develop a brand, but you worked with students collaboratively yep. to figure out how to do the work and the sort of interactive yep. thing. Yep. Yeah, that is my favorite thing to do. Awesome. Right. So, yeah, right. so um, actually, um, Team 1389 um, out of um, Bethesda, they, their team is their team is the Vikings, they're Wall Women, but they're, they're Wall Women High School. So their team is the best. Name is the Body Electric, which uh -huh. is well, with that no, right? I figured I was gonna go in there and give them like a not liking or something, right? And they were like, I don't think so. They said okay. so. Now their logo is a pendant, um, with lightning coming out of it. And um, we went down a whole bunch of classes. Yeah, we sat. We had a whole discussion, and then I came back and talked to them. And then all right, but they were. Oh, <laughs> 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 If, if I, I can uh, come and talk to the team uh, and make it a collaborative uh, with the team, because I want kids to know about branding. That's what I want. So. Right, right. So uh, that's what I was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. You have kids that are like two bags. Mm -hmm. That's like, I have not given you a lot of issues. Do you have any updates? Bringing them into the conversation so they understand why it matters and then giving them less than they understand. Behind and I think that would be a big difference for just being like, well, stop my first stand up. So, so that's yeah. kind of the way that I feel like we can really answer that. It is like all of you know, and I don't know if there's like both. I don't know. Right. At this point, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Totally. No, no, no. But anyway, we have like a I mean, I, it was, it was, you didn't change it, it was, right? 
I think was the smart because you know we need to talk and people know. Yeah, so usually what I like to do is sit down with the team. Well, we have a discussion. Do I need to get out of here? You know, or is this uh, I mean, you have a few minutes. Okay. I wasn't sure. We had, we, we had oh, so we but um, basically, I like to sit down with the team. We, we write down the non negotiable. Oh, there's something in school and like we have to be the Tigers. Okay, fine. We need to be the Tigers. So, or if we have to use these two more, this is that, the other thing, right? Um, and we write down the things that are not And then we talk about the other components that are not as defined and kind of figure out what we want.